Welcome back to the workshop handyman. Uh, today we're going to show a little quick project I kind of knocked out and I just want to kind of recap it in case you run across the same thing. Um, recently I did put up a video on a Grizzly uh, drill press and of course drill presses are mainly made for metal working I think more so than woodworking. Um, so anyways I needed a wood bench for it and I thought maybe I'd show this just as uh, maybe an idea for somebody if they have this particular one or one similar to it and we'll uh, show you what we did to make this more of a woodworking one so the model I have is uh, G7948 12 speed 20 inch floor drill press uh, and the reason one of the reasons I got it is because I do like the extra large surface here uh, but for all the trails tracks and stuff that are in there it really don't do me any good as a woodworker other than collect a lot of sawdust what I like to have is a little wooden bench on there so um, that was the first thing the next thing that I didn't kind of like about it was there was no place to put the chuck key so I did solve that problem pretty easily I bought me a, a little magnetic uh, tray and I just stuck it to the side of it and uh, the chuck key just pops up in there and stays right put so that works out pretty good so the next thing I needed was some way of putting uh, some sort of a surface on here and it doesn't I don't think I needed a whole lot bigger than that but the problem was on this particular base there's no holes that go straight through to mount it down like a lot of your other drill presses so what I had to do and um, like I say this is a completed project but we'll show you what I did and in this part of it I'm I can't claim to be a welder I can I can make things work when I have to I uh, I had to put a, uh, I welded a little tab to a half inch bolt, one inch, I think they're inch and a quarter bolts. And I put those on there and I faced those all in. And the reason I do that is, of course, uh, so they'll fit down into that track and uh, hold up so that I can tighten it down with a wrench. So when I did this, though, I did measure it carefully and made sure that uh, they were there. And I countersunk all my nuts into the backside so that they were flush with the top and then on top of that I went ahead and took a four foot t-track and I cut it to length here and I left 16 inches of room between here and here and that gave me access to my bolts this piece is not attached down the sides are there just to kind of hold everything in place and I did screw those down uh, there should be no reason to actually remove those so now, with that in mind, what I do, let's see if I can catch this on camera. Um, basically, we'll see here. I did have this a right and a wrong. I let the T-tracks hang out in the back just a little bit. Uh, like I say, I could call that a design flaw. But with those lined up now, I can take that and drop it into that groove. And I follow it all the way back until it drops down. And then I bring it forward. If I can if those were loose enough. Let's make sure they are. I thought it was. Unless you're starting one-handed, this is a little difficult. But anyways, we're going to slide that forward and then it'll drop down into the front side and they were measured to uh, be able to do that. Uh, let me go ahead and loosen that up a little bit and see if I can make that work a little better or give you an idea how it's going to go. We'll take that and just There we go. I guess the biggest thing is you gotta make sure they're all facing all the way down. I say, and you shouldn't have to really remove this after you get it into place. So we'll pull this back forward. I knew I shouldn't have taken it apart. There we go. And we line it up and we'll just snug the bolts down and it'll sit on there like that. Let me do that and then we'll show you what's the next stage.
Okay, so the next thing, we cut a piece of plywood that's the same thickness, of course, as your, your rails. And I cut a hole in it, and with this hole, I cut that with a big old hole saw. This is a four and an eighth hole saw. I cut that out. I believe that was the one I used. Yeah, and then I cut the, after I cut that out, then I could cut the other piece of plywood with the next size down. And I cut this just off center of my drill so that when I put this in, I line up the front face, then I can use this one. I wanna make sure I'm giving you the right dimensions here. Okay, I cut the first hole. Yeah, that's what I did. The first hole was, let's see here. Let's see if I can read this thing. Four and uh, I think this is just straight four inch hole. And then I came back with a four and an eighth inch hole and cut the next ones up. Anyway, it's just one size difference so that when I got done, this fits directly into that. So now when I drill, if you can see, I did offset that slightly. Let's see if we can show you. As I bring the drill press down, it's off just a little bit from, from a right in the center. And the reason I did that is so that if I need to do that to uh, go to the next piece, I can take that, swap it around. I can also move this whole piece in and out so I can hit a new spot on that. When I get tired of that one or it gets wore out, I can flip it over, use the other side of it, or I can also go ahead and throw in a new one and on that, I just took the time and cut two or three of them out and set them on the bench back there. So that'll take me a good long while before I can probably wear that all out. So that was the next part of the project. That works pretty good. Got your T-tracks all in there. And then I built the fence. So that simply had some hold downs on it and a couple of cross braces. I dadoed in the... Uh, Rabbit it in this and then run this through my joiner to make sure that this was perfectly square off of my joiner. And that way I had a good fence. I did not, this was a piece of the T-track that was left over from the other two off of that four foot stick. So now I can take this and we'll slide that into the track. And that gives me my, my flat edge for that. And of course, I've also got the other accessories such as tie downs and stuff that uh, that go into the T-track here if I want to hold something else down. So that gives me my full setup. And I also added the stop on this. So if I want to do repeated cuts, I can also do that. So uh, the fence is a little longer than the other to keep a good straight edge. Um, if I needed to, I could actually take the the two T-track T-bolts out and then just use the tie downs on the back of it and move this whole fence one direction or the other if, if I so needed. And it still has a good clamp down surface to hold it in place. So kind of a little bit of a versatile setup. So that should make this a little bit better for woodworking, I'm hoping. So we'll give it a shot, see if that works. Hope it came out to be uh, helpful for you if you have one of these drill presses. And uh, Looks like it's going to do pretty good. I've worked with it to build this project and it, it handled the big hole saws and everything that I threw at it. So uh, that comes out helpful. Let me know. Appreciate any likes and subscribes to the channel. I love comments and feedback. If you see something I should do a little better, let me know. Uh, any other ideas? I always appreciate uh, feedback. So we'll see you on the next project. Thank you all.